Hello and welcome to the latest edition of On Farm Helps. These episodes are a bit different to the usual. We're focusing primarily on offering timely and expert advice to rural businesses across Scotland to help them navigate these tough times of coronavirus. So we're wanting to enable them to thrive and survive in these difficult times. Please do get in touch if you can think of anything that you'd like us to focus on in future. So just tweet us on at on underscore farm UK. For this episode, I have been joined by Gail Ellis. I've known Gail for a number of years and she's uh, provided some very valuable advice and support to me. Um, She is an expert in HR and people management, uh, working for her business called Greenburn. Uh, Greenburn provide HR support for the likes of NFU Scotland, Scottish Land and Estates, Scotland Food and Drink. Uh, So they really know what they're talking about when it comes to uh, people management and particularly in times like this. Um, So Gail and I had a really, really wide ranging chat um, about everything that's happening in the workplace as a result of the coronavirus lockdown from furlough to workers rights, holiday entitlement, sick pay, you name it, uh, we pretty much discussed it. Gail and I were chatting uh, from our own separate offices under lockdown so uh, the quality may not be quite as good as you're used to but please bear with us the, the, the key here I think is to get the knowledge and information out there to people who need it so we started our chat with Gail giving us a bit of background about Greenburn and the kind of services that they offer to a wide range of businesses throughout the rural and food and drink sectors. Greenburn is um, an independent HR company um, quite small um, we but we are all specialists on our own field and we give expert advice and opinion to our clients and we had a huge range of clients from very very large organizations to tiny ones and uh, we work on the basis that we provide solutions so we're very proactive um, and hopefully get to know our clients and their business as well. Absolutely. Now, at the time of, of recording and, and broadcasting this particular episode of, of On Farm Helps, um, we are just coming to the end of week three of, of lockdown. And I understand that your phones have been going a little bit crazy over the last three weeks. Would that be true to say? Yes, phones and emails, phones and emails. And I, I, I thought it would just be for the first week or so, but it's just continuing um, as more and more questions keep popping up. You know, the legislation was changed. The Chancellor changed it a little bit on the 4th. So that created a new raft of questions. Um, So and it's confusing for people and it's a scary time. Um, So we'll do as much as we can to help with the knowledge that we have. Absolutely. And and there are are many different questions that have come your way with regard to holiday entitlement and management, uh, performance uh, reviews and performance management absence and, and sickness obviously irrelevant at the moment um but we'll maybe kick off because you've sent me a list of, of sort of questions that you frequently get asked we maybe kick off if that's okay with with furlough because I think looking at the questions that you've sent me that's been um an area that's generated maybe the most queries um and I know you've got um some some kind of examples um of the questions that people have, have come up with and, and a whole range so perhaps perhaps in your words, can you tell us what you think has been kind of the, 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 the biggest query with regard to the furlough scheme? Yes, I think with the furlough scheme, it's who can be furloughed and who can't be furloughed. And it wasn't terribly clear in the beginning. Um, people thought if it was if their jobs were at risk. And it was really because if a business didn't have a need for people, so hospitality industry is a classic example, all the cafes and restaurants closing, and what do you do with all those workers? So they could all be furloughed. Um, but as the time's gone on, more and more issues have come up. And so now the Chancellor on the 4th of April clarified the furlough a little bit further. And so furlough now extends to anybody that there isn't any work for. Um, If the work has stopped or the operations have slowed down, then staff can be furloughed only, though, if they've been on the payroll since the 28th of February. It's an important thing, this, because somebody phoned yesterday and said to me, he said, I I've taken somebody on on the 3rd of March, he said, and I'm going to backdate it so that they can be furloughed. 
So I said, how are you going to manage that? And he said, well, I'm just going to put them on the payroll. But I don't think he fully understood that they need to have gone through the PAYE system first so that the revenue has registered them. So an important point. I think I, I ruined his day, actually. Oh, dear. At least you kept him legal. <laughs> I know. I mean, uh, so it's staff who basically there isn't any work for, but also now the furlough has been extended to anybody that is a carer or if you have somebody has children and they have got real problems with childcare, they can't work uh, from home. And so it's been extended that they can ask to be furloughed as well. Um, now, you can ask to be furloughed. And a lot of people have come to us saying, I've asked to be furloughed, but it's been declined. Um, and it is, it's got to be something that's done by mutual agreements for for instance, if you have a very specific skill and your uh, director manager needs you um, to be available, they can say that they won't furlough you. Um, but I, I more, think, yeah. yeah, I think it's 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 a compromise. It seems to be working well, and the fact that the restrictions have been slackened a little bit for people that are shielding, people that are carers, people that have got children at home uh, and they can't work. I think it's made it a lot easier for everybody. You did touch on, on something there that, you know, with regard to childcare. And I think many people um, listening will, aside from having a greater level of respect for teachers, will now be, be realising how difficult it is to, to, to juggle work in many cases and looking after children, especially if they're small. I know my two are in the other room watching a mermaid video at the moment just to, to try and keep them quiet while I work. It is challenging. Am I right in saying then that once a member of staff has been furloughed, they can no longer undertake any work for that business during that period? Yes. We, <clears throat> yes again, yesterday we had um, a call for a gentleman who'd been furloughed since the 1st of March and um, his boss called him yesterday mo- yesterday morning and asked him if he would volunteer to go in to do training of one of the other members of staff who was actually not furloughed and that's really is a bit of a chancer obviously because <laughs> you're not allowed to do work at all for your existing company interesting you can work for somebody else so for example if you were furloughed you could take a job driving one of the delivery vans for one of the major supermarkets providing it isn't in contradiction of your current terms of your contract and that you get the approval of your you know your business owner or manager but you definitely can't work for your existing company anymore that's very useful to know, actually. And I suppose um, in the farming sector, uh, a lot of the in particular soft fruit companies are, are, are going to be crying out for, for labour when it comes picking time because they're not able to have access to a lot of the labour that comes in from elsewhere in Europe. So there is potentially an opportunity for people who've been furloughed to, to go and, and pick soft fruits um, as the season comes around. Oh, I think it's a great opportunity, to be honest. And I know some um, soft fruit farmers are already actually targeting people who've been furloughed but it's it's a wonderful opportunity because you know they're really helping and I think that's what everybody wants to do we've had lots of questions from uh, people who have been furloughed saying I want to help can I volunteer and yes they can volunteer they can volunteer and they can go and work somewhere else so I think that's probably where this land army is going to come from all the staff yeah. throughout the whole of the UK that have been furloughed which would be fantastic it, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And in fact, um, Monty, who's my business partner, um, very unfortunately um, has, has suffered an injury to his arm. Um, and uh, he's in the midst of lambing at the moment on the farm. He was saying that actually, in a sense, and you, you wouldn't wish this on anybody, but in a sense, it's fortunate that it's happened this year because he's got relatives who've been furloughed who can come to the farm and help him out with lambing and he gets the assistance he might not have had in any other year there are opportunities out there for people to to do something else and keep themselves busy I suppose yeah I I, it's interesting because um I I read I think in in one of the newspapers the other day how an easy jet pilot that had been furloughed had actually taken a job driving the delivery van in Tesco's it's amazing how many people I know now that have been furloughed that are actually taking jobs I know a lady that's taken a job in a care home 
and others that are just stacking shelves in Marks and Spencers and Morrisons or wherever. So I think everybody's pulling together. But that the fact that people can take another job in furlough, I think is really important. If you have two or even three jobs, you can also be furloughed from all of them. So if you had the childcare problem or you, you were shielding somebody who was at risk and you did have three, two or three different jobs, which many people do, each job can furlough you. I was actually having a conversation yesterday with somebody from Scottish Enterprise and we were talking in, in I suppose, general terms about people who can taking the opportunity of, of lockdown to upskill themselves and do some training. So if you've been furloughed, are you able to undertake training that is is relevant to your job whilst you're you're furloughed? Yes, yes. I mean, and that, <clears throat> I think that's being promoted quite heavily because it does seem an ideal opportunity. The only thing is, training is almost classed as working if you if you're only being paid the eighty percent as opposed to the hundred percent, because furlough attracts eighty percent of your salary, and the employer can lift it to a hundred percent if they choose to or can afford to. I think it's really more prevalent but uh, you've got to just make sure that if people are training some people don't fall below the minimum wage but again we've had a queries about this a couple of people have said we're going on a training course it lasts for a week it's a whole week where I have to do an online training course do I still get paid so you still get your furlough but in both cases the people were paid the 80% meant their salary reduced to such a point that they weren't earning the minimum wage for the hour so the employer then agreed just to uplift the furlough to 100% for the period that they were training. I see yes that that makes sense. When you're on furlough, are you also accruing annual leave at the same time? And and how does that work? Yes, yes. You continue to accrue annual leave while you're on furlough or if you're working from home. I think the whole leave situation is is going to be quite challenging. The the Chancellor's now said that um, 20 days leave can be extended to be taken over a two year period for everybody because he realises that this is going to impact on businesses quite significantly. So there's two things. If you're working from home, it's a really a good idea. You're still working. It's a good idea to still take some holiday. If you're furloughing, your or your business can ask you to take holiday as well. What they don't want to do, and a lot of businesses are really worried about this, is when they do get operational again, they're quite concerned about the backlog of holiday that's going to come forward. We've got one client who thinks that from September they'll be incredibly busy. Um, and so they're asking all their staff to take 70% of their holiday before September. So right between now and over the sort of summer period, which has proved a little challenging because some people see holiday as going away to the beach. But for operational reasons, um, now the Chancellor's extended it so people can take the holiday forward. But it's still causing concern for businesses because it means potentially on top of their normal re- statutory requirement or the hol- company holiday scheme, um, people potentially are carrying another 20 days forward um, for two years. So it's going to take some working out and a bit of manpower planning, I think, for all businesses to be on top of this. And so if if as an employer, you ask one of your employees to take holiday during this period, presumably that employee must comply, must they? If you want the employee to take five days holiday, you have to give them 10 days notice. So double the amount of time that they would be off. To be frank, it's one of those things that uh, can be a little bit emotive. So it's always better to come to some sort of sensible agreement. The extending it over two years, I think, should ease any tension. There are, I know from talking to people that have phoned a lot of people that don't want to take holiday during furlough. They don't want to take holiday while they're working from home. But the employer still has a duty of care to make sure that people are getting rest, they are moving away, and it's quite stressful for everybody. So I think it's a, a balance, as always, there should be a meeting in the middle somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose in most cases, that that's perfectly possible. And you, you yeah. can always assist with the smooth running if, if there's not an agreement that's kind of coming up straight away, I suppose. I can try oil, sort of oiling the wheels, I think we call it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. It, you know, it, it is, it's tiring. If, if you're working from home and 
trying to look after children or other relatives it, it is tiring so you, you you know you need a holiday you know not a dissimilar way to, to the fact needing a holiday under normal circumstances so I think that's that's maybe what people don't realize until they've got into that situation of, of working from home for a while and, and to appreciate that maybe. It's certainly proving quite challenging I think we've heard more from managers let's say who are trying to to manage people who are working from home and it it is difficult because and and I think we just have to the circumstances are so unique I mean they're 